um, we're hoping that he'll come out and apologize. Um, if I said something like that and it was taken out of context and I hurt other people, the first thing that I would do would be to clarify the meaning and apologize for hurting people. Even if it was my heartfelt belief, I would still say, I'm sorry for hurting you, tell me why it hurt you. Um, I'm hoping that he'll be man enough to do that. I'm fearful that he won't even show up, that he'll just send an intern out to talk to us. But we're hoping that he'll uh, have the courage to stand up for his views and either apologize or explain them to us face to face. Do you think that he will do that? I mean, do you, are you expecting? <laughs> I, I believe that people uh, uh, have the ability to redeem themselves. I, I, if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be doing this work. Ten years ago, if we did this kind of rally, um, nobody would have shown up, uh, no, the media wouldn't have covered it, it wouldn't have been an issue. Um, but because people, I think, genuinely are good at heart, uh, when they're exposed to things, they want to do the right thing. And so I'm hoping that uh, Senator Eichelberger, as he's exposed to lesbian gay people and gets to know them more personally, that he'll uh, change his mind and realize that he's on the wrong side of history. Have you met with him in the past? I haven't. Okay. Has any, do you know if any um, gay rights advocates have met with him? And uh, we've been trying to uh, meet with him. I know that uh, some of the people who are here uh, have been making phone calls and have been trying to talk with him. Nobody has been able to get through to him. Okay. Mike, how do you think making such a statement like we're allowing them to exist can be construed in any other context. It can't be. <laughs> the, who allows somebody to exist? Now, he's, he's claiming now that he was only talking about couples, only talking about couples, but it's still questioning somebody's existence. S substitute the name lesbian and gay and put in any other ethnic group, any other minority. We're allowing black couples to exist. We're allowing Jewish couples to exist. Think about it in that context. That's the context that it's in. So whether he's questioning individuals' right to exist because they're lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or whether he's questioning the existence of couples to be able to be couples, that's what he's saying. Somebody, the Republican Party, he and his family, the state, somebody has the power over somebody's existence. And the only places that I can think of that really have the power over somebody's existence are Saudi Arabia, Iran, countries like that. They do have the power over your existence. And if you don't abide by what they believe is right, they terminate you. And do you think his, his bill uh, legalizing discrimination in the Pennsylvania Constitution could be a first step towards maybe his ultimate goal, not allowing people to exist? Uh, we'd have to ask him that. But what, what, what we're focusing on today is not the marriage bills. This, is the, this uh, news conference and what we're doing today is not about marriage. It's really about um, civil rights, civil liberties, and the right of people to exist. Um, we, even if you disagree, and we've had lots of people who, who've written to me and said, I don't think that lesbians and gays should be married. But what he said was outrageous. Okay, what time do you think he'll be arriving? Because we can stay. It's hard to tell. I really don't know. Okay. Well, we're here because uh, I'm sure you know why. Uh, he's, he's made some pretty outrageous comments about lesbian and gay people. And we have just a few people here who would like to say some things to him. I mean, look at uh, the signs that people are, are carrying, and it's pretty clear what, uh, what the message is. Mm -hmm. um, is, there any, is there anybody that we can speak to besides the senator? Um, well, there's no, well, there's no, no other staff people here? There is, but he's the committee director. He's not okay. legislative staff. Okay, there's nobody in the building, even though they knew we were coming. Did they, did they decide to? We hate to put you on the spot <laughs> because it's, you know, no, it's not your fault. No, the chief of staff drives in also, and he's not here. Okay, and do you know what time he'll be arriving? It's hard to tell. Okay. Like I said, so should we, should we stay two. here? They, that, that's up to you. You can wait out in the hall. So what would people like to do? I mean, they knew we were coming. Well, why don't we, um, there's nobody here to speak to, and we don't want uh, this uh, fine young woman to, uh, to take the brunt of uh, our anger. Um, so You're welcome to wait um, We can wait in the hall. Um, let me also tell everybody, can everybody here out there? Come up, come a little closer. Um, the other thing that's happening besides this, it, at the same time, uh, we would have had actually a lot more media coverage, uh, but the governor is uh, holding his news conference at exactly the same time. So uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of folks thought that his story might be a little more important than ours with the, with the budget being in such a precarious situation right now. 
So uh, we've told some other media who, who want to come that we would also be available at 1 o'clock for them uh, in the rotunda. So since uh, Senator Reichelberger has chosen not to meet with us, I think that what we can do is uh, go back downstairs. Um, for those of you who can, stick around a little longer. Um, stick around until about 1 o'clock, talk to the media who are there, and then have them come up with us at 1 o'clock. And then maybe by that time, Senator Reichelberger will uh, have the courage to meet with us. Does, how does that sound to folks? Okay, so we understand that a lot of you have uh, just on your lunch break and can only be here for a few minutes, but uh, if that's okay, that's what we'll do. Okay? Where on the second floor? Right off the elevators. Okay. The second floor is the entrance to the chamber. Tuna Media had called him to ask him what his response was to what was going to be happening today at noon. We know that's the case. We also know that it's the case that at least one person from his campaign or staff is on our list, which is fine. We have nothing to hide. Um, but we know that everything that we send out is going to his people, and they know that. So there's no question that they knew what was going to be going on at noon. By not being here at noon, on a day when the sessions are starting early because of the budget problems, means that he chose not to meet with us. That was a conscious choice. So, I don't want to dominate this, folks. I, 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 we pulled it together, but I want to see what other people are feeling and thinking that we should do from here. How many people are willing to just say, well, he didn't apologize, let's just drop it? Nobody? <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are your ideas? What, what other things do you think we can do? So do you have a planned meeting at one o'clock again? Um, well, again, what we did, we went to, we, we called the media, we faxed and emailed them, that's why we got a good response from the media. They, under, they understand the importance of this issue. Um, as a matter of fact, some of the TV stations in Altoona asked the TV stations here in Harrisburg to cover this so that they could get the fee. So there's a, there's a real understanding of the importance of this. However, when we went to the Capitol newsroom to talk to the reporters who are based here in the building, they said, We'd like to cover this, but we only have one reporter here, and so we can't cover both the governor's news conference and yours. So we told them that we would stick around until 1 o'clock for those, of, those who couldn't make it. So that's what we're going to do at 1 o'clock. We're going to go back to the rotunda. We'll, we'll be there with our signs and our uh, buttons, and they'll know who we are. And then we'll do the same thing again for those of you who can stick around, if that's okay to folks, if there are folks who want to do that. How many people are willing to stick around to want to do that? Wonderful. So why don't we do that, and we'll come back, and we'll come back here. Sure. Now, if, if I were the staff person, and I were doing my job, the first thing that I would do as soon as I shut the door would be to call them up and say, those crazy people were here. <laughs> and so, again, they'll have two choices. At 1 o'clock, they know we're going to be back at 1 o'clock. If I were Senator Eichelberger, I would put my pedal to the metal to be here and to, and to say courageously what I stand for, one way or the other to stand up for my bigoted opinions, sorry, or to apologize. If he's not here at 1 o'clock, he's sending us a very, very clear message that means that we have to keep this going and we have to escalate. Because if he gets away with saying things like this, then other politicians are going to be able to get away with it too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.